As we boarded the Grand Voyager, a sense of adventure filled our hearts. The air was crisp, salt-tinged, and the vast expanse of the ocean stretched endlessly before us. Julia, my partner of five years, clutched my hand with excitement, her eyes sparkling with anticipation for the month-long cruise we had planned. It was supposed to be our escape from the mundanity of our daily lives, a journey into serene waters where time itself seemed to stand still. The first week at sea was as idyllic as one could imagine. We dined under the stars, danced till dawn, and spent lazy afternoons basking in the sun's embrace. The ship, a marvel of modern engineering, was a floating paradise, adorned with opulent decor and offering amenities that promised indulgence at every turn. Our fellow passengers, a diverse tapestry of characters from around the globe, added to the vibrant atmosphere on board. But as we ventured deeper into the heart of the ocean, a peculiar fog enveloped the ship. It was an ethereal mist that seemed to cling to the very air we breathed, casting everything in a spectral haze. The crew assured us it was a common occurrence at sea, yet there was an unspoken tension that began to pervade the atmosphere. One morning, we awoke to the unsettling news that a passenger had gone missing. The announcement was made with a practiced calm, but it sent a ripple of unease through the ship's occupants. Search efforts were promptly organized, yet no trace of the missing person was found. As days passed, more passengers disappeared, vanishing without a trace or explanation. The initial veneer of tranquility gave way to a mounting sense of paranoia. Whispers filled the dining halls and lounges, speculation breeding fear. Groups began to form, alliances based on suspicion and the primal need for survival. Julia and I found ourselves isolated, unwilling to partake in the blame and conspiracy theories that seemed to flourish with each passing day. Our oasis had transformed into a floating fortress of mistrust. The fog persisted, thickening, its omnipresence a constant reminder of our isolation. Then the provisions began to dwindle. At first, it was whispered rumors of missing food and water, but soon, the reality became impossible to ignore. Fights broke out. Once civil conversations turned into confrontations fueled by fear and desperation, the ship, our haven, had become a battleground. As the situation escalated, an ominous feeling took root within me. It was as if we were not alone, that something unseen was watching, waiting. Julia felt it too, a silent acknowledgement between us that the horrors we faced were not merely the result of human frailty. In the shrouded corridors and misty decks of the Grand Voyager, a chilling truth began to emerge, one that threatened not just our sanity, but our very souls. The days melded into a singular, continuous loop of tension and fear. The fog became a permanent fixture, a veil that shrouded the Grand Voyager in an ever-present gloom. The absence of the sun's warmth, once merely a discomfort, now felt like the loss of a lifeline, plunging our spirits into despair. Julia and I spent hours gazing into the impenetrable mist, searching for a sign, any indication of a return to normalcy, but none came. The disappearances continued, each announcement from the captain more disheartening than the last. Our numbers dwindled, yet no one dared to venture too close to the sea's edge, as if the ocean itself had become a malevolent force, eager to claim us as its own. Whispers among the passengers spoke of a strange force, an inexplicable compulsion to walk into the enveloping fog, never to return. Amidst the chaos, a new revelation emerged. Some passengers had been hoarding food and water, creating stockpiles and secret locations throughout the ship. This discovery fractured the already tenuous peace, turning suspicions into open hostility. Groups that had once banded together for mutual protection now eyed each other with wariness and contempt. Julia and I watched from the sidelines, our hearts heavy with the realization that the journey we had embarked on had turned into a nightmare. Our conversations, once filled with dreams and laughter, now revolved around survival and escape. Yet escape seemed impossible, with the ship adrift in an endless sea of fog. One night as we lay in our cabin, the sound of hushed voices caught my attention. Peering into the corridor, I saw a group of passengers speaking fervently, their faces etched with fear. 
They spoke of a presence, a sinister force that whispered in the shadows, drawing them toward the edge. The realization that we were not merely contending with human greed and panic, but something far more ancient and malevolent sent chills down my spine. The next morning, we awoke to find the ship eerily silent. Venturing out, we discovered that several more passengers had succumbed to the mysterious compulsion, their belongings left behind as silent testament to their departure. The ship's crew, once a source of authority and reassurance, now seemed as lost and frightened as the rest of us. The captain's announcements once daily occurrences had ceased, leaving us adrift in uncertainty. In the grip of the fog isolated from the world, Julia and I clung to each other, our bond the only certainty in a sea of doubt. We knew that if we were to survive, we had to uncover the truth behind the fog, the disappearances, and the whispers that haunted our every step. Little did we know that our search for answers would lead us into the heart of darkness to confront a horror beyond our wildest imaginations. Our resolve to uncover the truth grew stronger with each passing day, fueled by the desperation and fear that had taken hold of the Grand Voyager. The ship, once a symbol of human achievement and luxury, now felt like a prison from which there was no escape. The fog ever present seemed almost alive its tendrils creeping along the corridors and cabins, an ever-present reminder of our isolation. Julia and I began our investigation in earnest, speaking to the remaining passengers and crew, piecing together the events that led to the current state of terror. We learned of whispered voices that seemed to come from nowhere, compelling those who heard them to walk into the fog, never to be seen again. Some spoke of dreams, vivid and disturbing, in which they were called by an unseen entity to join it in the depths of the ocean. Our search led us to the ship's library, where amidst ancient texts and maritime logs, we found references to an old sea god, a creature of unimaginable power that dwelled in the deepest parts of the ocean. According to legend, this being could control minds, drawing the unwary to their doom with promises of power and knowledge. It was a chilling revelation, one that seemed all too real given the circumstances we found ourselves in. Armed with this knowledge, Julia and I devised a plan. We would attempt to use the ship's communication equipment to send out a distress signal, hoping that someone, somewhere, would hear our plea for help. The journey to the communication room was fraught with danger, as we navigated through groups of increasingly paranoid and desperate passengers. When we finally reached our destination, we discovered to our horror that the equipment had been sabotaged, rendered useless by someone or something that did not want us to make contact with the outside world. It was a devastating blow, but it only strengthened our determination to find a way to survive and escape the malevolent grip of the sea god. In the days that followed, the ship became a battleground as factions among the passengers clashed over dwindling resources and accusations of betrayal. Julia and I kept to ourselves, focusing on our own survival and the hope that we might find a way to defeat the ancient entity that held us in its thrall. As the final week of our supposed month-long journey approached, a sense of impending doom settled over the Grand Voyager. The fog thickened, enveloping the ship in an impenetrable blanket of white. It was then that the true nature of our adversary revealed itself. One night as the fog parted momentarily, we saw it, a towering figure, ancient and terrible, with countless tentacles and eyes that glowed with a malevolent light. The sea god, in all its horrifying glory, had come to claim the ship and its souls. The sight of the sea god, a nightmare brought to life, was a moment of terrifying clarity. Julia and I stood on the deck hand in hand as we gazed upon the creature that had haunted us through the fog. Its form was massive, its many tentacles writhing in the air each movement causing the ship to sway as if caught in a tempest. The eyes, unblinking and all-seeing, seemed to pierce through us, knowing our deepest fears. The realization hit us then. We were not merely passengers on a doomed voyage, but participants in an ancient ritual, one that had awakened this deep-sea deity from its slumber. The disappearances, the whispers, the compulsion to walk into the fog, it was all a means to feed the gods' insatiable hunger for souls. In that moment of despair, 
a spark of defiance ignited within us. We refuse to be mere offerings to a forgotten god. Together, Julia and I rallied the remaining passengers and crew, sharing our knowledge of the sea god and our plan to confront it. Fear had kept us apart, but in the face of certain doom, unity was our only hope. Armed with whatever we could find, we faced the creature as it encroached upon the ship, its tentacles reaching out like the fingers of death. In a desperate bid for survival, we fought back, using fire, noise, and our sheer will to push back against the ancient being. It was a battle of wills, humanity versus a god, under the shrouded moon that watched silently from above. Amidst the chaos, an unexpected ally emerged. The ship itself, or rather, the spirit of all those who had sailed and lived within its steel frame. The Grand Voyager seemed to come alive, its engines roaring back to life, as if fueled by the collective will of those on board. Guided by an unseen hand, the ship began to move, cutting through the fog as it made its escape from the clutches of the sea god. The creature, enraged by our defiance, thrashed against the ship, sending waves crashing over the decks. But for every blow it struck, we pushed back harder, our resolve strengthened by the knowledge that to give in was to accept oblivion. And then, as suddenly as it had appeared, the sea god retreated, its form dissolving into the mist, leaving behind only the echo of its wrath. In the aftermath, as the fog cleared and the sun rose on a calm sea, we counted our losses and mourned our dead. But in our hearts there was also relief, and a sense of victory, however pyrrhic. The Grand Voyager, battered but unbroken, made its way back to civilization, carrying the survivors of an ordeal that would forever bind us. As we disembarked, Julia and I looked back at the ship, our home during those harrowing weeks. We had faced the unthinkable, a force beyond comprehension, and emerged alive. But the world we were returning to was not the same as the one we had left behind. The Sea God, though defeated, was out there, a reminder of the mysteries that lay hidden in the depths of the ocean. Our journey had come to an end, but the whispers in the mist would haunt us forever, a testament to the ancient horrors that dwell in the dark corners of the world, waiting for the moment to awaken 